Superb. Right, Catherine, we're up and running. We're up with you. Excellent. Afternoon, Shaheem. Good to talk to you. Firstly, how good to be back after a couple of months out with your ankle injury? Um, it's always it's good to be back around, around the team. Um, it was a, a long two months or nine weeks, you could say. Uh, I thought it came at a wrong time for me when I felt like I was just picking up some, some momentum after a difficult start to the season on a, on a personal basis. But yeah, I'm happy to be back now. <coughs> Sounds like it's been quite a frustrating couple of months for you then waiting on the sidelines. Yeah, been a been a, a very frustrating few months. Um obviously seeing the team team do well in parts of that that time that I was out, I always feel like oh, it would be nice to be be around while still doing well. But still plenty of the season left to really make your mark and make a big impact. Starting of course with what felt like a really big point against Leeds on Saturday. What was that game like to be part of? Uh, it was amazing to be a part of. Um, I don't think I've seen the John Smith like that since um, playoff, the playoff season uh, at, when we had Luton around that time. Um, I feel like we dug, we dug deep for a very long time with 10 men after unfortunate decision. But yeah. How difficult was it to come into that game, coming on as a substitute, and what were your instructions from from the head coach? Um, it was very difficult coming into it. It was a very fast-paced game. I feel like we obviously was on the back foot because we had ten men. Um, my instructions were just just defend well, go forward when you can, but be conservative with it, obviously, because of the situation that we were in. Is that one of the areas of your game where you feel like you've maybe improved in recent seasons? Because I think you've talked before about kind of that growing maturity, reading a game, and sort of that that decision making, knowing when to attack, knowing when to defend. Yeah, I feel like sometimes with a, a young player coming in like myself, we can we can be a bit of a liability on the defensive end with our decision making. Uh, sometimes we get we get caught out with simple things just because of concentration lapses, which might might not just be because of how we are as a footballer but just the the environment we're in we know it's, we know it's a high stake high stake game we're playing so sometimes I feel like um, we can get caught up in the moment and sometimes make the wrong decision but you didn't and you got that point which could prove as a real springboard now to the rest of the season couldn't it yeah uh, we have some some very big games coming up over the next you could say two months however long is left uh, I feel like we do need to get safe and get safe as quick as possible. <clears throat> the championship is ridiculous at the moment. It's so tight at the bottom. So many teams could potentially mm. be drawn into it. How much notice are you taking at the moment of tables and other results? Uh, me personally, I don't really take much notice of uh, other results. I feel like, I don't know if it's just me being naive, but I always feel like like, I feel like in my head we're safe already, which we're not. I feel like it's just the trust I have with the, in, in the group. I don't feel like we should be where we are. And I feel like we'll be OK. So I just try Maybe not to... Maybe that's the right mentality to have, though. Not worry yeah. about what anybody else is doing. Focus on your game. Yeah, I'm not in panic mode yet. Because, like you said, there are a lot of teams teams around it. So, yeah. One or two wins on the, on the bounce, I think we could be not potentially out of it, but put a bit of distance... <coughs> And an opportunity to do that away at Cardiff. Now, the home game against Cardiff was a very difficult one. Do you feel like Huddersfield Town is in a much better place, a much different place from, from that previous game? Uh, yeah, I feel like um, over the last month, we put together some very good performances. Um, obviously, under Worthy's uh, management, you could call it, picked up a, a bit of momentum and I feel like we've kept it going. We've had some unfortunate results in that run, like... Southampton um, and one or two others, but yeah. The Southampton performance, though, even though it ended in defeat, you gave a really good side, a, a real run for their money, didn't you? It must give you a huge amount of confidence equally, you know, taking, leads, uh, uh, taking points off leads as well. It shows you can really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody in this division. Yeah, always. It's always been one of those divisions where um, you, could, you could say, like, the team's higher up or whatnot. Um, but you never know what's actually going to happen. I feel like any team could give any team a run for their money. And as you say, the team wants some consistency now towards the end of the season. For you personally, hopefully a run in the side as well. What would you like to achieve between now and the end of the Championship campaign? Um, obviously to stay up, uh, first and foremost. 
that's what I'm putting first. But me myself, um, uh, I think I'll just wanna obviously keep getting more games in and try to get back to the level I was at before the injury, if not better than that. And have you had an opportunity, I mean, he's barely been in the building, but to kind of have much conversation with the new head coach so far and, and his expectations for you? Uh, yeah, um, the first few two, first couple of training sessions, I was back, he just kept checking on me to see how I was doing the session, asked me if I'm okay, do I need to step out or if I feel like I can, if I feel like I can continue. Just telling me I'll be ready because you never know, never know what could happen. And it seems like he comes in with a, a very attack-minded philosophy in the same way that you're quite an attack-minded player as well. Do you think his style is going to suit you? Yeah, 100%. Uh, I feel that like obviously it, it's hard for him to fully implement it as of now because of the situation we are in. But I feel like um, you can see like little glimpses of it which, which look really positive. <laughs> And there's been a lot of talk both under John Worthington and, and the new head coach about you know this shackles off approach. Is, is that really going to be the key to it between now and the end of the season? Go in there, no fear. Uh, yeah, I think we should play with no fear. I think we get the best out of our players when we play like that. Brilliant stuff. Good luck on Wednesday. Thank you, Jaheim. Thank you. That's Catherine. We'll come to Stephen from We Are Terriers in the room. Hi, Jaheim. Good to see you again. Um, you say you want to get back into form after your you time on the sidelines. You obviously had a similar thing last year where Neil Wannett came in, you started brilliantly under him and then mm. unfortunately got an injury. Do, do you feel like the experience that you had last year puts you in a better place this year to, to come back in, in good form? Uh, yeah, I feel like the situation obviously was in last year was a, a lot more tense than it is, mm. in, is now. Um, I also feel like last year I, I was... Not necessarily fully confident, but I feel like um, obviously coming back from Harrogate and coming in not straight away, but I feel like it was a big jump which yeah. affected me. So yeah. Another player who's sort of done similar this year, Brody Spencer, obviously someone you know mm. very very well. I mean, it's either good competition there if he stays on the left, or a really good complementary partner if he moves to the right. You must mm. be looking forward to. Competing with him, playing with him. Uh, I played with Brody for for a while now. It was always nice to play with him. A good friend of mine as well off the pitch. So it would be very nice to share the pitch with him at some point. If not, even if he plays in my position now, I'll always support him as well. So. What are the benefits when you go out on a loan like that? And it's you know maybe a perspective from the club that all you need is that little bit of experience. What are the things that you pick up when you're away, on and off the field? It's just first team experiences. Like I said, um, sometimes. With young players, it can be a, a liability coming in. Uh, I feel like when you go away for the building and you play at a different level, it just you just learn different levels of the game. Innit? So when you come back, you know you're familiar with the situation. You don't get like uh, what's the word I could say. You don't get caught caught in a moment. Like for example, if you was to put a young player in on Saturday that hadn't played before, I'm pretty sure they would freeze up in that in that yeah. situation. Yeah, um, we've seen this. This system um, that played, sort of starting with John Worthington, that Andre is sort of now building on. There's opportunities there for the wing backs in that system to get into the box, have a shot, have a go at goal. We know you like doing that. Are you yeah. is that sort of wet your appetite going into games? Uh, yeah, you could say so. Um, yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're looking forward to that. Cheers, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll come to Jim, who should be on. Jim, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah I can hear you fairly good, fairly okay. Uh, Jaheem, I suppose you mentioned there about training and training under the new coach, Andre. Have you noticed any sort of subtle differences in terms of training, in terms of the way he goes about it, in terms of maybe how he implements a training session? Uh, I feel like it's very, some, a lot of sessions are very detailed. It's not details to the but it's not to the point where you just stop start he lets stuff run, which I think is very good. It encourages us to, to play football but play smartly. Don't like put ourselves in difficult situations. So yeah. Yeah. And have you you mentioned about the tactical uh, element in terms of how he's trying to prepare his teams. Would you work an awful lot even more now than what you were would do originally on set pieces and set piece moves and uh, to be fair, I've only been in one set piece meeting. Um, I feel like it is very detailed. You know what you're doing, um, who you're marking, 
they give you like some stuff on what they're going to do and how we would basically counter that in it. So yeah. I suppose you mentioned where Cardiff City, another team on good form at the moment, like yourselves, uh, putting uh, results uh, in the bag. And I suppose momentum is the key around this time of the season. We all know too well Huddersfield uh, have a habit of coming alive at this time of the year and sort of other teams. Uh, Cardiff are one of those teams as well that tend to put on good runs towards the end of the season. But I suppose in terms of momentum, it's something you really can't buy really come March or April time. That if you can get on that bit of roll, that juggernaut at all, it's very hard for teams to stop a team that has maybe one or two wins on the balance. Yeah, um, momentum is very important in this league. Like I said before, um, momentum here can basically distance us from other teams that are in the relegation fight. And Jaheim, you mentioned there about not looking at the table, but for a long time it was probably four or five, four, maybe four teams probably down there for a while. Now it's sort of seen uh, yourselves and QPR on great runs of late, and it seemed now that it's back to seven or eight again. That must really instill the belief in the dressing room to see that all the, all the spot, three or four more teams around you again that weren't probably a day or a month ago that were probably a bit in the distance they're back now beside you as well so that must instill the belief that one a one win could make you jump two or three places while before a month ago maybe a one win might only bring you a point behind the team now if you win a game you can jump up the table yeah it's a very uplifting change room in general um we all have self-belief in what's going on here what's going on at the club we all know that we we'll believe that we can basically get out of the situation we've once again put ourselves in so yeah yeah and I suppose finally question for me uh, Jaheem uh, I suppose knowing now know that Andre's come in it's a new coach and obviously you you made your appearance under him and you've probably have an idea what he's expected about there's a bit so there I say there's no such thing as an assurance in football but there's probably is there that bit of assurance now with Huddersfield Town that at least Andre will be there and I had to see out the, the campaign as well so you probably know from now to the season what's at stake you probably know to now the season the manager you have in charge as well so I suppose as a club uh, as as a player you, you can really get down and focus and get down to business there's going to be no other sort of obstacles around the corner there I say yeah uh, it's very hard when things are chopping and changing you've got different people telling you different stuff and you have to kind of adjust some some plays it takes longer than others um, I think now that we have Andre in the building until the end of the season we know that um, we basically have a set set task and what, what we have to do to stay up so yeah, yeah. cheers thanks Jane. thank you Thank you, Jim. We'll be back with Andrea around one thirty, guys. Thank you.
Superb. Thanks, Catherine. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Andre. Um, a fantastic point against a very good Leeds United side on Saturday. How important a result was that in hindsight? Yeah, it was really important and it felt like a win uh, because um, when, you, when you play over 60 minutes um, uh, with one player less um, against, a Gegner, uh, against an opponent like uh, Leeds, it's uh, really hard. And uh, yeah, the, but the, the, the boys, they did it really well. They fight it and uh, they played as a team and um, with a clear structure and uh, high discipline. So. Um, this is absolutely good for the uh, for the self confidence um, and for the next games. How much can you learn about your players from a match like that as well? Yeah, I know about the, the mentality and the, the spirit uh, in the team, and yeah, all the fans and uh, yeah, the crowd. They um, they believe in the in the team and they push them them um, over the whole distance. And um, yes, um, I enjoy the team every day in the training uh, and uh, can see that uh, they also train very hard and with high discipline and they want to take the next step and um, yeah, this is uh, always good for head coach. As you say, you played a lot of the game with 10 men physically as well as mentally. How much is that taken out of your players and is that something that you will be mindful of when making your team selection for Wednesday? First of all, it's always unnecessary to get a, a red card. Um, it was not a really good situation and we had to keep clear in our head, um, especially for Hoggy, he apologized after the game, but it happened. Um, yes, the other guys, they had to run a lot in this game, but we had a day off on Sunday. We had um, today the recovery training and we play on, on Wednesday evening, so it's uh, it should be uh, no problem um, to to um, do it again um, in this uh, intensity and with this mentality. And also we have uh, around uh, 22 players in our squad and everyone is ready and prepared to, to go on the pitch. You go to Cardiff on Wednesday night. Do you go with a similar approach maybe to the game away at Watford or is it again an entirely different scenario that you're going to have to, to deal with? Yeah, we will see. We uh, today we prepare everything about Cardiff. Uh, we know that uh, Cardiff is a technical good team, and uh, they are really good in form uh, at this moment. Um, we have always respect uh, for every opponent, uh, but we want to speak about our team, and we want to find solutions uh, like in Watford, uh, like uh, especially in the first half against Leeds and. Uh, um, yes, uh, we want to play our style of play and um, then we will see if it's work uh, or also in Cardiff. The, t the table is very, very tight at the moment. Firstly, how much notice do you, you take of the championship table? Surely you have to, as a head coach, keep one eye on what's going on with the teams around you. Yeah, you're right, I have to, but to be honest, um, my first view is not on the table because um, um, for me at this moment it's important that the performance of the team is um, good and we can be uh, very proud of them uh, after a big uh, win uh, against Leeds. The point was very important for them, not only for us as a team, also for all the fans and supporters. Uh, they stayed uh, behind us. Uh, uh, unbelievable! It was really good to see, and um, yes, uh, I, oh, I I get uh, so many messages every day, and uh, yeah, they are with the team, and they see that uh, uh, that we are on on a good way to perform, and um, so this is the most important thing, and uh, the table is um, um, really important after the last match, and then we will see, and uh, hopefully uh, celebrate um, to stay in the league. It is so close and so many teams who are still in potential trouble of, of relegation. Does that really hammer home the point that consistency to get a, a few results back to back is going to be the only way to move up that table and put some distance between you and the bottom three? Yes, but we, we, yeah, we have only to, to show on our team and on our performance and when we will do the same things like uh, the last two or the last four or five games 
uh, then I'm 100% sure that we can uh, get the points we, we will need to stay in the league. Um, yes, uh, we don't expect every week uh, teams like Leeds, so uh, we, has, we, has to, um, re we have to respect uh, full against every opponent, but uh, our team is good and um, we have a high quality and uh, high uh, potential players. And, uh, uh, until now, uh, we have some players who are injured, so they will come back and uh, maybe increase the, um, the quality of the team. I'm totally positive with this and um, um, I'm sure that we uh, have a good April um, uh, with good results, but for this we have to work hard and uh, to, um, to make the things like in the last two games. There, because it's hard to, to, to win boi points in the championship and uh, we have to give always our best. Do you speak to your players, maybe encourage them not to look at the table too much, not to fixate on, on other results and who's won today, who's lost today, where does that leave us? You can drive yourself crackers quite quickly, can't you? Yeah, but we have 12 games to, to play. It's absolutely too early to, to, to speak about the table. We have to speak about our performances and uh, the performances are really good at this moment and uh, we have to believe in this and um, yeah, to make uh, the next steps uh, for, for the next few weeks. So, yeah, the table is um, then important when we know <laughs> we, 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 we stay for sure in the league. Then it's important, uh, maybe earlier than um, the 4th May. Um, but uh, uh, in German we would say, am Ende wird abgerechnet, it uh, counts uh, at the end. <laughs> Finally, a word on team news. How's Yuta Nakayama after he went off injured on Saturday? He was again today, but uh, um, at this moment we are waiting for the results. So um, he has an injury with, with, his knee, with his knee, but I don't know exactly um, what the result is. But we will um, get you uh, the information when we, when we they have. Okay, but as it stands, he won't be playing on Wednesday. No chance, yeah. No, okay. Um, and I just wanted to check on Brody Spencer, who had been poorly, managed to play a big number of minutes for you on Saturday. Is he still? Is he feeling better now after that? After the He's weekend? feeling better, and um, he uh, trained uh, in the recovery group today, so um, there's no problem for Wednesday. Excellent. Um, anybody else who's definitely missing or anybody else who's definitely back for selection on Wednesday? Radinho Balka is, uh, it looks um, really better, but it seems uh, a little bit too early for him uh, for, for Wednesday, but he's uh, on a good way and uh, we hope it, it uh, works for, for the next weekend. Excellent. Thank you very much. Good luck on Wednesday. Thank you very much. Thanks, All the best. Thank you. Welcome to Stephen from the Art Areas in the Room. <coughs> Andre, just continuing on injuries, if I may, um, how far away is Rhys Healy from making a return? He, he trained on the pitch with an athletic uh, coach and um, today I, I spoke uh, to him uh, a little on, on the pitch and um, it, for me it looked good, <laughs> but uh, it takes uh, some more time, uh, we hope uh, latest in three weeks and uh, we hope a little bit earlier. And Bojan Radulovic, is he, um, after his illness, is he feeling better and ready to do sort of more minutes now? Yeah, he's uh, ready. Last uh, last week he trained uh, just one time and uh, so he was on the bench, uh, but it was not the, the, the right uh, playing situation for him to come, to come in. And uh, so today he trained uh, um, really well and uh, he's an option for Wednesday. We've not seen a lot of Bojan since he arrived at the club. Do you feel his opportunity is going to come? Yes, absolutely. And he showed us in the training that he has quality. His start as a starter was not really good, but uh, uh, it was not only his problem. Uh, the first half against Sheffield, uh, the whole team didn't work at this uh, day uh, in the first half and um, just, uh, uh, yeah, just in the second half. It uh, it was uh, much better, but he was out. So um, then the next games he didn't play, and yeah, for a striker is uh, such a situation. It's not really easy. Uh, but now he is uh, very high motivated in the training, and he want uh, he wants to get the chance to play, and uh, he works for this. And 
that's why I'm happy with his performance uh, in the training and uh, then we will see um, if it's the right moment on Wednesday. On Wednesday, Cardiff, we know they pose a huge set-piece threat. They've got the most goals in the division by a long way. Uh, is that something you particularly need to prepare the, the, the team for, the corners and free kicks, or is it business as usual for you? Business as usual. Um, Set-pieces are important and every week. Uh, we saw it uh, last weekend. So um, we are used to prepare everything, so in, in the same thing like every week. Um, have you had much experience of this kind of schedule, sort of three games in a week? I know obviously you've had European competition, which would have been, but do you, does that pose particular challenges as a head coach when you've got three games in a single week? It's absolutely normal um, to have English weeks, uh, maybe <laughs> here in, in the Championship with 40 uh, six games and two cups. It's a little bit more, but um, for me, it's a really normal thing uh, to play three times per week, and yeah, you have to recover a lot. Uh, you have to uh, have a good nose for the uh, for the for the right moment in training, for the exercises, um, uh, and for this. Uh, so we pre uh, we are good pre pre prepared for for Wednesday. Um, tomorrow we have the first time uh, all on the pitch because all, today we split it, uh, the whole squad. Uh, but um, the, 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 the game is really the most important thing and uh, the, the, the players, they like to play more than to train and that's why we are happy that we can play on, on Wednesday evening. That's all for me. Thank you, Andre. Thank we'll you. finish with Jim from RCB Radio. Jim. Hi, hey, Andre. Uh, very nice to meet you. Uh, first time uh, talking to you. Uh, Andre, I was just sort of wondering, uh, your time in Germany, you would have managed an awful lot of uh, German clubs. Did you look on at English leagues and the uh, championship and the Premier Premier League with great admiration? I suppose the type of football they play in Germany, it's fast-paced, same as the English league, while Spain and Italy might be a slower sort of tempo. Is that the type of football you like, that sort of fast-paced football? I like this uh, style of play, yes, for sure, and uh, I, my opinion in, um, here in, <coughs> in England, uh, it's a little bit uh, quicker than in Germany. Um, uh, Germany is more technical football and um, maybe not so quick in uh, building up and uh, in, uh, in transition play here <laughs> in England is uh, the intensity uh, much higher and, uh, and this is uh, why it's so attractive for me um, to, to give uh, my experience uh, to such a team and uh, to, to uh, show if it, if, if it works and uh, after uh, two weeks um, yeah we're on a good way and um, yeah I like it. Yeah, and I suppose coming into the championship, Andre, you see teams of pedigree, I suppose a former Premier League winner in Leicester City there, Southampton, Leeds, uh, clubs with sort of big uh, reputations as well. It, it must be appealing as a foreign manager to come in over to England to try yourself, to test yourself out uh, in those sort of games and those sort of uh, environments as well, to go up against teams that might be perceived to be bigger in terms of their 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 reputations and sort of such and where they have been in recent years in terms of the Premier League but uh, it, it must be sort of appealing all the same. Yeah, it's uh, really great uh, to, to play against teams with much experience and, and uh, tradition. Um, when we speak about Leeds um, from last weekend, there are a lot of uh, Premier League players, players played for Barcelona, Champions League, and um, but I, I can say in, in Germany the second league is nearly the same. We have a lot of traditional uh, teams uh, in Germany now. We have uh, more, more um, supporters in the second league uh, than in the first league because of the traditional teams uh, so and in England it's it's the same you have always a very good atmosphere in the stadium they are nearly all sold out uh, full of supporters uh, many many away supporters uh, are behind the teams yeah it's special and uh, this is what I like and this is uh, why we became professionals uh, to to play for this
I suppose, Andre, you would have managed an awful lot of teams, a high success rate, but you would have probably had pre-seasons to prepare. You would have probably have August, September in terms of preparing your team for the year ahead. Coming into a situation, say, in, in February, uh, to a situation where there's three or four months in terms of the season is all packed in and sort of condensed, uh, you have to sort of build on what's already there. You can sort of, say, tear up the whole jigsaw and start from fresh again. You can put your own bits of ideas into it. But uh, is that sort of challenging? Is that a, a new challenge for you in terms of your managerial career coming in to a team halfway towards the end of the season? No, it's not the first time I enjoyed a Nova nine games before the end and before the end. So I have I, I know what uh, what I have to do in in, in this club and uh, now it's really important to stay in the league and now to speak about uh, the the preseason or it's a long way to go. Um, yes, um, we, we when we stay in the league and we are um, totally sure for this, uh, then we we need a good preseason. But uh, it's not the the right moment to speak uh, about the future. We have to concentrate. Um, it's a situation now. Uh, we have to go uh, game per game, step by step, and uh, to to increase uh, our level and uh, to to yeah show all the the, the supporters and uh, also that we we deliver. And um, over the future, we we speak in summer uh, when we um, achieve the goal. You mentioned there about doing your homework on Cardiff at the weekend. Was there elements that you saw that were impressive in this Cardiff City side? There, a team with a bit of momentum behind them, like yourselves at the moment. Were there elements that, that you thought that, yeah, that they looked impressive in certain areas? Yeah, it's a good, a technically good team, and they won the last two games, uh, so they have a lot of uh, self confidence now. But uh, when we speak now um, about Cardiff, um, maybe they we can give them some information uh, what we maybe want to um, do on the pitch. So, yes, first we speak to our players, uh, we prepare the match plan for Wednesday and uh, it, I'm fine when we speak later after the game about uh, our preparation. And final question for me, I suppose we know uh, Delano uh, Bergsog had a fruitful time in uh, Germany. Uh, he had a good record there. Were you, were you aware of what he had done previously in Germany? And I suppose are there elements that you liked uh, in his time in Germany that you feel that he can bring and even enhance his game in terms of the championship? Were you aware of Delano before you even came to Huddersfield? Um, yeah, I, I know many things about the players because uh, we spoke um, many weeks uh, before I arrived. Uh, so um, I got some information. So, um, why it didn't work in Germany, I cannot answer because I was not the head coach from Mainz uh, 05. And um, now he uh, is in the team. Uh, he he had an injury, and um, the last two games he start he, he started uh, as a starter and uh, did it good, um, did it well. Yes, and um, now he. He deserves uh, to to score a goal because strikers they want uh, to to score goals and uh, yeah, he's one of uh, one of eleven in the lineup and he has to do his uh, job um, also in the defense and um, yes he played with high discipline and uh, I'm happy with his performance and uh, then he uh, is now um, um, ready for goal. Cheers, Andre. Best Cheers. Luck against Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. We'll uh, see you later in the week. Thank, Thank you. you.